Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. My name is Open Dog. Welcome today. I want to share with you our greatest strength is in our unity. As Africans, our greatest strength is in our unity. As Africans, when um, the Europeans had been here for almost 300 years and they decided to uh, share our continent amongst them, you know, in 1884 85. The whole strategy was for them to just uh, cut us into pieces, uh, to disunite us, and um, not in term, not only in terms of land mass uh, or, or physical boundaries, but they also divided us. Uh, they use a lot of things to divide us. The Arabs had done that as well through their religion, and uh, the Europeans through their religion, through physical uh, partitioning of our continent, and all. Kind of things that they have used you know to divide us and then we also came up with we also came with our own uh things in terms of tribes and other things that separate um you know uh one another from ourselves and so um you see there is so much strength in unity and so those of us on the continent when we are one and we work towards common objective of creating prosperity and development for ourselves and for our people those in america those in in the caribbean those in europe africans everywhere coming together and seeing africa as our main project of working to make sure that our people enjoy the best of our prosperity the best of the things the treasures the wealth that africa has and that will come because you're wake up as Africans, whether we were born on the continent or whether we were born outside the continent. Our greatest strength is us coming together. And if you look at the whole systems that they have used, the many systems that they have used, they were all meant to keep us separated, keep us misinformed about ourselves, you know. So growing up, not much, I didn't know much about the history of those in America, those in Jamaica. And I'm sure that they also didn't know much uh, about us, except that, that the ones that they were showing in their movies and the ones that they were showing in their news and on their channels. And most of these channels were were, 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 were managed and were monitored. You know, they had an agenda to keep uh, a certain image of Africa, which has to be a uh, poor people, uh, unintelligent people, uncivilized people. We went there to give them. And so um, even growing up, I, I had a lot of prominent preachers who, uh, there was a time a preacher said that they, <laughs> he was, we should thank God that the Europeans came to colonize us because we would have fought uh, to kill ourselves. And now that I had problem with that kind of statement, it was, that much uniform but because we look up to those people as very prominent you know powerful people with following not much of what they did were as informed you know so they will just make a lot of statement to instead of them to look at the atrocities that happened to africa and that continued to happen you know we he was trying to give excuses and so our strength actually our greatest strength is in our unity coming together as africans those on the continent and everywhere and working to make Africa uh, prosperous, going into industrialization, into manufacturing, into processing, you know, writing our own stories, produ producing music that, that will wake our people up, building schools and hospitals, building infrastructure, governing our people, you know, conscious uh, Africans getting into political positions with the aim of playing their part to make sure that our continent and our people uh, are in charge of our economy. You know, and so our unity is in that. And in a bit to working together to become one people, there will be casualties, there will be errors, there will be mistakes, but we don't have to give up on ourselves just because somebody has offended us or somebody has let us down. You know, one of the things that is difficult working with Africans, especially those of us who were born on the continent who moved somewhere, is that they come from the position of mistrust they come from the position of you know um chauvinism they come from the position where they are very much condescending on those of us who were born here so it said that when you're even doing business with them you know they come from the position of mistrust and i think that you cannot work together if uh, for a bigger goal uh, for a bigger agenda when we, we we condescend when we mistrust on any little thing
and so we have to have big heart to trust and to be open and to know that it will take a lot of mistakes a lot of errors a lot of disagreements a lot of fight for us to be one people and work towards this agenda because whether we like it or not the whole world treats us as one people once you look like me once you look like an african and uh, you can deny all that but when it comes to anything go to anywhere in the world they treat the same treatment that we are giving and so if you're giving the same treatment then why don't we work together after all we all have the same heritage and treat ourselves better because nobody else will treat us better but ourselves so when you are in a political position you're in business or you have a religious organizations when it comes to anything that will lift your people up be patient try them maybe there is a young businessman somewhere that you tried you gave a project to and they disappointed you don't cut them and say that i would rather go for the chinese or the indians no build them help them teach them some of them will not listen but you have to try about a million for one not to listen for you to give up <laughs> you know for all of them not to listen for you to give up so long as you have not tried a, a million or 10 million of us then there is still more room for us to be tried and tested because we are coming from the same kind of you know uh damaged positions there's not much that we we know about ourselves and there's not much that we know uh, about working together as a people and those were even deliberate keep them separated disunited mistrustful of themselves let them look up to the european the european or the white man as the ultimate solution let them because he is closer to god those things must be broken down and and those things were set to make sure that we are not united so in our, our greatest journey that we have to embark on is uh, working together as a people we know that many may not agree to this because it takes a lot of effort but it is still the only solution that we have that as africans we work together for our common good for our common goal for our own development there will be challenges there will be troubles people will disappoint us people will let us down but we still have to have the heart to work together because that is the only solution it's like a family if you can work together there's no future for you and as a matter of fact people who are united cannot easily be broken cannot easily uh, be taken advantage of but cannot easily be overcome and be destroyed they can only overcome us when we are disunited when we are not one the moment we go with one or not even everybody we get a good number of us who can focus on this goal that nigeria kenya tanzania ghana south africa all these countries jamaica african americans everywhere those in europe we come together to correct the history we come together to build technologies we come together to build financial powerhouse that we invest in african businesses we come together uh, to write books to change the and to improve and to equip our people develop the mindset of our people develop the way we see our people give platforms to africans those things if the moment we start to work like that change the narratives uh to a very good position not a victim's position but a great people's position change the history all the errors that they, they they implemented that our people continue to repeat them let's correct them that day i was talking with a friend and he was you know anything that you say about history then he's reparting it then i asked him so when you were in the university did they teach you any history and then he said that ah uh, you have me on that one <laughs> yeah i don't remember the total so and i said that after school did you read anything then he was there so then you don't know much so why are you arguing but I had to be very patient with him because I know that I was in the same situation where I didn't know much and I, I even thought that those things were not important because from primary school to secondary school to the university, um, the history that was taught us, uh, maybe the traditions and the cultures were, were cultural education were okay, but the kind of history that would deal with the European misinformation were not there. And then I would enter church too is the same misinformation about us. So I get to 40 years, I get to 30 years, and they're expecting me to be a strong African. How am I going to be a strong African when I don't know much about Africa and I don't know much about myself? So a greater strength, I dare say, is our unity. Our unity working for the good of Africa. And so you, you can, maybe you are born in America. You may even say that I don't like anything about Africa. Where did they hear? Where well, a lot of African Americans will say that uh, they don't like us in Africa. How do you know that? You have never. <laughs> how do you know that they don't like you about Africa? They don't. They sold us. How do you know that? They sold you. That is what the Europeans told you, and you believe it. You think that everybody in Africa was selling human beings? No. A lot of them fought with their lives. 
challenge the system but they came with 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 systems they came with with equipment they came with tools they came with shape they came with chains they came with guns you don't tell us that we were selling our people that's why they came no they came with an agenda to destroy and they continue to use their institutions you know the western institutions to continue to suppress africa sometimes i i think ah why, why do you think the africans are your children but we are many on the continent alone we are about 1.3 or so billion people in america in the caribbean and all over if you put us together we are getting close to 2 billion people we are powerful enough they have only kept us down because we are uninformed and we are not working together the moment many of us will take ownership of ourselves to take ownership of our continent and show interest you don't even have to live here but visit and correct the errors our strength our greatest advantage the greatest advantage that we have for the next 50 years for the next 100 years is for us to own africa and work to it some people are very worried about chinese coming to africa i think that we they can only succeed if we keep this united if we stay this united but so long as we we work and we wake many of our people up we are very much intelligent tough um resilient people that nothing can overcome us if they could not take the, ta uh, the the continent if they could not kill everybody what makes you think that in the future they can do that so we are not weak people we just been much uninformed and we, we probably been much uh, separated and we see ourselves as individuals you know so we have to have a common goal say that if i see an african do something i will extend a happy hand i don't have to have any self-interest in that but i'm ready to help you as an african to succeed